Hi, boys and girls. Mr. Moyer here. Uh, it is Wednesday, 325, and it's about 730 at night. Sorry I missed yesterday, and I'm late with this one today. But it's been a crazy couple of days uh, working on things to get ready to get back to teaching you guys next week, which I'm excited for. Uh, hopefully you are excited to get back to kind of some normal activities for school too. So I look forward to talking to you more and more in the upcoming days. But without further ado, here's chapter 29 in Fish in a Tree. This is called Miserable King. I'm sorry, it's chapter 30. Miserable King. Two days later, a lady named Miss Kessler pulls me out of class early in the day to give me some tests. Mr. Daniels is right. They are more like puzzles and games than those awful bubble tests that we do, where I just fill in circles without even reading the questions. She's really nice, like Mr. Daniels. After school, Mr. Daniels is setting up a chessboard in pieces at the reading table. I walk over and he looks up. So, did your mom tell you that I called? Yeah, she didn't say much though. She usually has a lot to say about everything. He laughs. Moms usually do. He motions toward the chair. Have a seat. I pull out the chair, wondering what this is all about. Okay, he says, loosening his tie like we are going to do some serious work. Chess is a game about planning. It isn't like other games where you just capture the powerful piece. He points to a piece with a cross on top. This is the king. The object of the game is to trap your opponent's king, but not actually capture it. When you put your piece in a place where it could take the other king, it's called check. When you give the other king absolutely nowhere to go, it's called checkmate. And that's how you win. Normally, I would be nervous and my mind would go blank. But he, has just, he just has this relaxing way. His voice makes me calm. Maybe because I know he will never say anything mean, call me lazy or dumb. And... I know he wouldn't think it either. Got it so far? I nod. So then, are you going to capture my king? I hesitate. Did I mess up already? Didn't you say that you don't capture it? That you just make it miserable? He laughs. Yes, I did say that. Good, Allie. Good listening. So, he goes through the rest of the pieces. The queen is the most powerful and can travel in a straight line in any direction. There are eight pawns that, when you band them together, can be strong. Most players take them for granted, though. He tells me that's a mistake. The rooks look like castles and travel in forward, backward, and side-to-side -side lines across the whole board. The bishop travels diagonally in straight lines, and the knights can jump in an L shape. The king can only move one spot in any direction. It stinks to be the one with the target on your back, and be the one who can't go anywhere. He has made up a sheet with pictures of the pieces and arrows to show how they move. He says it is in case I need a reminder. I turn it over, looking him square in the eye, and say, I don't need that. He smiles a little, but never takes his eyes off of me as he reaches down and moves one of his pawns. Good. Then. When I start to make some dumb moves, he asks, Are you sure that's what you want to do? The first game ends fast, but on the second game, I capture his queen, the most powerful piece on the board. I stand up so fast, my knees push my chair back and it falls over. I want to ask if he let me do that, but I'm afraid of his answer. He holds up his hand to high-five me. Well done! And it is so weird. I don't have trouble with this game. I like it. I like planning what I will do to trap his pieces. He shows me how you can work it so that you put your piece in a place where it can choose between taking two different pieces. Then your opponent has to choose which one to let go. That's called a fork. I love the look on his face when I manage one of those and take his bishop. Like it hurts a little, but he kind of likes it too. The longer we play, the better I can see it in my head. I can see what the board will look like a couple of moves from now. I learn to predict what he might do. I see a mind movie where chess pieces come to life. They can travel around on the board all day by themselves, and they are happy that 
they don't have to just stand there and wait for somebody to pick them up and move them. I know how relieved they are being able to do something for themselves. That's the end of chapter 30, and I'll read chapter 31 also. Chapter 31, Lots of Ways Home. So, did you tell your mom that we talked? Mr. Daniels asks. Yeah. I take a long breath, noticing that I can feel my own heart beating. I have to talk to you about something. This doesn't sound good. I need your help. You need my help? Yes, I do. You know how Miss Kessler gave you those tests? Yeah. Well, it appears that you do have dyslexia, which, like I said, makes learning to read difficult, but doesn't mean you're not bright. In fact, he says, half smiling like Travis, you're very bright, Allie. The tests show that too. I shift in my seat. But you will need some help with learning to read better, and we're going to get it for you. Thing is, it might take a little time. Sometimes the paperwork and the meetings around that take a while. Okay. You know how I said we can't play chess on Tuesday or Thursday? Well, that's because I'm taking classes to get a degree in special education. Basically, it's a degree to help me help kids like you. Kids who are smart but have learning differences. Smart? Learning differences? So I spoke with Mrs. Silver and Mrs. Kessler. He leans forward. And your mom, of course. And we were thinking that I could help you after school a couple times a week. Until we can get you into formal services here at school. I open my mouth. But he holds up his hands. I know. Staying after school with me will be torture. But it would really help me out with the projects I have going on for my degree. You'd be doing me a huge favor. And I'd be so grateful, Allie. He leans forward. So? I swallow hard. I'm not dumb. I know I'm not doing him a favor as much as he's doing me one. And I can't believe or imagine what I've done to deserve help like this. Stay after school? I'd sleep at school if it would help. I nod, and we shake on it. And he looks kind of dopey and happy. I shift in my seat again. But can I ask a question? Sure. What are learning differences? Oh, okay. He thinks. When you ride your bike home, is there more than one way to go? Yeah, I thought so. He says. Well, just like there are different ways for you to get home, Allie, there are different ways for information to reach the brain. You have five senses, right? Taste, smell, sight, hearing, touch. I nod. So, what if an alien landed in a spaceship and you had to explain what the word frozen means? without using the sense of touch. What if you had just had to use words? I think that would be hard. Do you? Yeah, it would. I think you've had some trouble learning words with just your eyes. We are going to incorporate more of your senses to practice letters and sounds. And I want you to relax about it. We'll have fun, I promise. I won't give homework on this. No tests to study for or anything like that, okay? I nod. Have you liked playing chess? I nod, hoping we can play today. You know, I had a feeling you'd be really good at it. I think your mind learns in pictures, and it helps you to be a really good chess player. We've played several times now, and you've learned it so fast and improved a lot without much time. Also, thinking in pictures? He leans forward. It's one of the reasons that you're so good at art. Okay, I say, thinking this all sounds pretty good so far. The only thing that worries me is that it won't work. I still won't be able to read. Good then, he says. We're going to practice writing letters, but we won't use paper or pencil. Then he pulls out a huge metal sheet and hands me a bottle of shaving cream. We're going to use this. And by writing in shaving cream, you'll use sight and touch and write large enough to use your whole arm. Just more ways for the signals to get delivered to that amazing brain of yours. I smile. Now, 
Feel that giant sheet with foam, and let's get started. As I draw my finger through the gooey cream, I think about the words learning differences, and I'm filled with fear and happiness and questions, but I'm mostly filled with hope. That's the end of chapter 31. Uh, I hope you enjoyed those chapters, and I'm looking forward to reading more tomorrow. Have a good night, everybody. Bye.